behind me we have sitting a 2000 Honda Prelude. Uh, the customer concern on this vehicle is a crank stall, um, you know, a crank no start basically. Uh, I confirmed it already that it is in fact a crank stall. Um, what I found when we went out to check out the vehicle initially is that if you start the vehicle and you hold the key in the start position, it will actually start and stay running. So this auto automatically narrows down uh, kind of our diagnostic approach as far as where we're gonna start our testing at, uh, and that would be to the ignition switch. I believe something's going on with the ignition switch, uh, just based on the fact that if you start it, and hold it in the start position, instead of letting it go, it'll stay running. Uh, as soon as you let it go, everything dies. So immediately the first thing I did is take a look at wiring schematics, which we'll take a look at here and understand how the vehicle is operating. Before we tear into the vehicle, um, I just wanna understand, you know, the ignition switch for this particular vehicle how it's working and how power flows through it. So looking at the ignition switch here, we've got uh, the start and on position. Both will supply power to this black and yellow wire, which uh, if we run through the uh, schematic, it goes over to this fuse box, which feeds fuel pump and a whole bunch of other things um, that, you know, modules and whatnot. Um, so this is the first place I want to uh, start just because looking at the schematic here, you know, in the start position, we send power out on this pin one to the starter relay. Um, you know, the on and auxiliary position, I didn't even trace this down. This is off to another fuse block. Um, and then on position is another power supply here. I'm not so worried about those quite yet, just because I know that there's something correlated between the on position and the start position. Um, you know, and I'm assuming power related at this point. So this is gonna be a fairly quick check. We're gonna go in, we're gonna find this black and yellow wire uh, underneath the dash and test this for power. We're looking for power to be on this wire, both in the start position and the on position to tell us what, what's going on with this contact inside of the ignition switch. All right, we have some Phillips screws under here. These pulled out. So, well, I think you already see something here I don't like. You can see that little bubble or drip of the plastic there where it's melting. So that's already a bad sign. Um, what we're gonna find in here, but we're gonna move forward, follow the data on this, uh, see what we find. We're gonna go ahead. I have my black and yellow wire, which is the one we were looking at on the schematic there. Uh, of course, all you're getting is my elbow in your face. And, just bear with me, I'm gonna probe this, this wire. So go ahead and pierce this wire. Um, so on the topic of piercing wires, things that are internal that aren't gonna be um, as likely to get wet or corrosion, I'm okay piercing, just depending on the scenario. Um, Exterior stuff. I mean, it's just a case-by-case -case basis on whether or not I pierce something. All right, so we we're probed into that black and yellow wire. Um, and then I have my black lead on my multimeter down to the ground. So we're going to go ahead. Um, I'm going to start this first and hold it and start. And we're going to see, hopefully, you know, that we have voltage in the start position. As soon as I let go of the key, what I'm expecting is that we're going to drop voltage off of that wire. Yep, so it's in the run position right now. So we'll just slowly turn the key forward. Look at that. It's not quite to the run position, but I'm on like the detent for the, the between the run and the start position. I get power there, you know, anywhere past that point and then drop it if I let go of the key. So that's kind of confirming what my assumption is. Now I'm comfortable to go ahead and pull this uh, ignition switch off. So there is, I'll grab a light here. 
there is two screw holes. You can see the top one there, but I can't get the camera quite in there, but I can see back in there um, that there's no screw hole on that top screw. Not really sure what the story is there. So I just see this bottom screw and then there's a screw up on the back side over on the blue part where the plug goes in. Um, that one I'm gonna get out off camera. Um, there's no good way for me to get the camera in my head back there. So then we'll get this one pulled out last. Alrighty, so I got all but this screw out. So there is our ignition switch. We'll go tear this apart on the bench here. I do notice that the little turn dial over here has some excessive play in it. I, sh I say turn dial, not turn dial, but um, the rod that comes through from the lock cylinder or the key cylinder. It has some play. I'm not sure how much is not enough or too much, but the other thing I see, I'll bring it up here and show you. So I also noticed that we've got a hole here but that was not showing through the hole on the ignition switch. That hole for the ignition switch was offset a little bit. But we also have a hole here. This is the one it was threaded into and an offset one right here. I'm not sure, you know, if there's a possibility that this could be screwed into two screws instead of just one, something like that. Um, we'll look at that, but let's look at this ignition switch first here. All right, let's see here. Pop this cover off of here. Yep, so right there, this is the blister in the cover that I was seeing, right there at the tip of my finger, hopefully you can see that. And this flowing solder is what caused that. Um, you can see, so it doesn't look like the joint here is broken or anything, but the solder from the top of the joint definitely melted and came down. So what caused the heat would be the next question. We'll go ahead and pop this lower cover off. See if we get all the ghibli bits fall out. Oh, not too bad, not too bad. All right. So we can see Right here is the terminal for this spot here that got hot. You can see a burn mark on this contact point right there. So I'm assuming it was poor contact that created an excess amount of heat, which melted this solder. Uh, let's see here. So this would be like this. Which position are we in? So we are in the run position right now. I turned, I don't want to flip this over, but I turned this. I marked it first, you know, how it came out in the off position. And then I turned it to the run position. And in the run position, I just want to see what the contact looks like. So it's tough. I'm not going to be able to really show you guys But in the run position, this thing like just contacts, just contacts the corner where this burn mark is. Um, you know, it sits right about here. It doesn't make a contact point over here, which is you'd, where you'd think you'd ideally want it. And I don't know if this is an aftermarket part or not, you know, if it's ever been replaced. But I just wanted to see where this contact was lining up and it looks like it lines up right here. You know, if this was to turn further, it may, you know, make better contact, but the default position is right here at this, at this point. So let me look at this a little bit closer off camera and see what we find. 
just looking at this, playing with it a little bit, kind of figured out what I wanted to figure out. So before I make a call on this, um, I want to make sure that in the vehicle, the shaft itself that turns this switch is not what's causing the issue as far as too much play. There may always be a little bit of a possibility, but uh, I believe the right call is gonna be just this switch. And the reason is this, um, you can kind of see, so right under, right under here, there's a little bit of a silver spot you can see, and there's a detent ball, and then there's one over here on this side. And they are detented into this housing, and there's no play in the housing detents. So in the run position, like once you've turned, once you've turned the key to start and let the key go, that's all spring loaded, and it turns the key back until it hits the detent for the run position. And there's no play in that. So I just was questioning that because I wanted to make sure that since this is riding that contact is riding so close to this tip right here that you know it wasn't supposed to be riding in the middle or something like that and then um you know it was just slopped out and worn out causing it to sit back a little further and not get you know not make good contact but i don't i don't believe that's the case because that detent ball has no play no play in it or anything like that in the detent it sits right here so I think that the contact just got hot, burned itself, it's now shot. Um, so I really do think the right call is just the switch assembly. We'll replace it, confirm the repair. I already talked to the customer and they agreed, uh, replace the switch, uh, confirm the repair afterwards and make sure everything's good to go. But it does make sense too, because this whole contact pad needs to make contact with this contact point here while you're turning the key you know, fully through the run position, it needs to be making contact as well as in the start position. It needs to make contact that whole time. So it does make sense that it would sit back here towards, you know, the rear, towards the left of the pad, and then ride forward when you turn the key into the start position on here. Uh, so th this does make sense where it's sitting. I'm happy with it. Uh, we're gonna go with this call. We're gonna replace the switch uh and confirm the repair from there and worst case scenario you know we end up having to replace the housing but i just don't want to jump the gun on parts before um you know before they're needed or if they're not needed so alrighty, we've got our ignition switch in this morning looks about the same Let's go ahead and get this thing installed. Alrighty. Wiggle this little bad boy up here. Yep, so even this one only aligns with one hole. Take a look here. Yeah. So it only aligns with one hole, so I'm not sure if it's an aftermarket thing or whatnot. But let's go ahead and find that screw. Probably sitting on the bench over here. All right, so this screw's stuck in here a little bit because of the solder melting. So we're gonna go ahead and nip that off. Get that screw out. So I have both of these. Before we get carried away though, should be able to plug this in and confirm our repair. Well, I can't find the tool I really want, which is a really short bit driver. Don't even, this thing's gonna be too long. Well, what do you do? Well, that's what I ended up coming up with. Just a quarter drive ratcheting wrench. That was low profile enough to get back in here. We'll show you what I'm looking at. So that screw way up here is what we we're getting at. There's just not a lot of space in between here to get and get that screwed in, but got it in there, got it tight. We'll plug this in here. Snapped in place, we'll get this put back together. Moment of truth. That's a good sign. 
Bash power's up now. Very good. Well, I appreciate you coming along and checking out this diagonal repair on this 2000 Honda Prelude. Uh, now you know how to replace an ignition switch on one. Granted, if you live in the salt belt like we do, probably not ever gonna get to the point on a 2000 model car that you need to replace the ignition switch, at least not anymore. Uh, but yeah, this is a cool, quick little diagonal repair. I think the customer will be happy. I hope you're happy and I'm happy. See you next time.